So one thing I often tell people for this station is don't just give a blanket. I will provide information on and allow her to make a decision. Be specific. If it is IUFD, what information are you providing? So you want to say something like, I'll provide information regarding the risks associated with high UFD, such as infection, blood clots, uterine damage, and give the woman an opportunity to make a decision with no pressure. Hey guys, welcome to my channel once again. My name is Omobola. And in today's video, uh, we'll would be going through the professional values skill station of the midwifery husky. If you've not seen the previous videos, the link is going to be in my description or you can just click on this card right here. Um, I hope you've been finding values in the videos, um, if you've been following and if you're new, I do hope you enjoy the videos. <laughs> um, without wasting so much time, we're just going to go right into it. <laughs> always will be reviewing the marking criteria and then um, i would also get to share with you an acronym you could use so you don't forget when exam comes but it's very similar to what we've discussed in the um evidence-based station so i won't be dwelling so much on it so um for the professional value station you could possibly get like a couple of things it could be safeguarding it could be bereavements um and it could be i think there was one about feeding oh yeah this is one here the one in the mock um scenario says um dignity respect and choice and it was a scenario of a man of a woman who had her babies in nico and neonatal icu and then um, the husband was kind of like putting some pressure on her for her to keep expressing and she didn't feel up to it at that time and she was just like you know what i'm not even expressing again i'm not breastfeeding again and all so she was upset and all of that so that was the situation and the question was summarize the actions you would take in a number of points it's a silent treating station and it is professional values and behavior so for this station you could get this one you could get bereavement and you could get safeguarding so what are you supposed to do in either of these situations? It's pretty much the same thing. So the things you want to highlight that you will do, if you've watched, I think at this point, let me just say pause. Please, if you've not seen the evidence-based station, can you please like watch that video before you come to this one so that you can understand what I'm talking about. So um, in that video, I gave an acronym, which it was RCHTIP where her was relationship, where you get to build relationship, build a lasting and trusting relationship with Amy. I will get rapport with her, things like that. And the C is communicating where you would communicate findings in that, in evidence based, it was communicate findings. But in this situation, it's going to be more of you listen actively to the woman and you hear out her concerns without any judgments, hear out her concerns, you listen to her without any judgments, and then you also let her know not to feel pressured um, about anything whatsoever. So those are things you want to mention in the C. In the C, you were communicating findings in the evidence-based one, but C here is more like listening, it's still part of communication, it's more like active listening, like reassurance providing reassurance and things like that and they're not being judgmental not being biased another possible situation or scenario in addition to this one could be feeding choices um someone wants to actually feed her baby but she's been pressured to breastfeed so how would you act in such a situation so irrespective of the situation it is knowing the approach that is the most important thing so um if it's a situation where in case of bereavement this woman had iufd so what are you going to do you want to listen to her um it could be that she's had iufd and she's not coming to terms with it she's still in denial and of course we know the risks that could come with iufd if it's not if it's not um taken out of the body as soon as possible you think of you infection uterine damage heavy bleeding blood clots 
pain, fever, vomiting, diarrhea. So those are things that might happen um, in the case of IFD. You want to note these things. So one thing I often tell people for this station is don't just give a blanket. I will provide information on and allow her to make a decision. Be specific. If it is IUFD, what information are you providing? So you want to say something like, I'll provide information regarding the risks associated with IUFD, such as the ones I listed earlier, infection, blood clots, uterine damage, and give the woman an opportunity to make a decision with no pressure. And if it is um, artificial milk and breastfeeding, she wants to give specific points like that relates to that situation and not just a blanket i'll provide information i don't know if you get what i mean and if it's um, a safeguarding scenario provide specific information that relates to the scenario uh, and then the next thing you want to do is you offer holistic assessments to the next thing you want to do is to offer holistic assessment to provide continuity of care and um, provide reassurance. So if you read the scenario for the one in the mock, it says something like, um, our children are in NICU and they are doing well. So that kind of information is not there for being, being, being there. You want to reassure the woman that, okay, you don't have to feel pressured to um, express breast milk. You are doing amazing well. Your babies, your babies are fine in NICU, so you're doing really well. And these are things that you can do, like you can rest well, because if you're not well rested, it might affect the milk production. You drink a lot of water. I could signpost you to lactation consultants if you want, and to support groups that could help you even on your breastfeeding journey if you do choose to breastfeed. So those are like specific points that you want to mention. So this is the case of the breastfeeding um this is the case of the the woman who wants to stop breastfeeding because her husband was um pressuring her so like look for specific things that you want to do um that's the h then we've talked about the h is um holistic assessment the c is a specific thing that you want to do and then um if it was if it was a safeguarding scenario Specific things that you want to do is going to be something like um, you would um, check her body for any bruises. You would um, check for any other signs of um, that are making you consider the safeguarding in the first place. You want to like explore those things. The next point is um, advocate for Miriam's choice and involve the MDT. Then for each of the scenarios, you want to specify which MDT you are involving um for instance in a bereavement scenario you're thinking of involving the bereavement midwife in the case of the safeguarding you're thinking of the safeguarding midwife in the case of um the woman with feeding concerns you're thinking of oh the lactation consultant so like it's not a blanket thing you have to be specific in the case of um, the bereavement scenario you want to consider like um to ensure continuity of care you want to consider like some follow-up visits you want to consider involving the spiritual uh, providing spiritual care if she's happy you want to say something like that allow her to grieve in a, in a cultural and not like in a, according to her own culture in a way that is safe such that some people when they grieve they want to have candles on and probably she's in she's in the hospital she can't have candles on because of oxygen so you could provide alternatives maybe those electrical candles that are battery powered so that still gives the form of she's using a candle but not like the proper lighted candles so like you want to be specific to the situation and list points and not just blankets i will do this um i will do that i don't know if you get what i mean and then the last thing here is the P, ensure she receives individualized care that promotes and optimizes physiological processes. So that's pretty similar to what we've done at the evidence-based station. Um, I'll just go through the marking criteria quickly. I think we should have even gone through the marking criteria. I just knew something was off. I'm like, what am I talking about? Okay, so safeguarding. No, let's do the bereavement first. 
So bereavement care marking criteria recognizes the importance of building a respectful and trusting relationship with the person, acting in the person's best interest at all time, relationship building. So that's the R, where we said the R-C-H-C-I-P. In this case, it's going to be R-C-H-C-I-P, relationship building. So we've talked about that already. Provides clear, balanced information regarding induction of labor process and gives adequate time to make an informed choice about our care. So you're doing communication, like you're communicating, you're listening to her. I mentioned listening earlier. You're listening to her and then um, you're communicating the things I mentioned earlier and then you're working in partnership with her. Like it's up to her to make the decision. You're not enforcing anything on her. You're not being biased. You're not being judgmental. You're not putting her under any pressure. Those are things you want to mention here. And you're going to give her adequate time to make her decision. The next thing says, provides individualized care and reviews the person regularly as part of an holistic assessment of her well-being and care requirements. So holistic assessment um, recognizes the need of providing respectful, empathetic, dignified care and promoting continuity of care and carer so like you are promoting continuity of care when the fact that this has happened does not mean she's going to be by herself when she gets home you would um, ensure that a midwife is coming home to see her like to do the post two days the three days check the five days check and so if she wants if she wants because at the end of the day that's why you're working in partnership with her at the end of the day you might think you want to but she doesn't want it so it's going to be in partnership with her what she wants okay advocating for the person's care choices and works in partnership with the person and the mdt as required to support the person's choices so you're advocating for whatever choice that she's made um and then you're working in partnership with her you're letting the mdt know this and they're also working in her best interest and in partnership with her recognizes individual circumstances relating to stillbirth including arranging a pastoral or spiritual care or supporting the the family to spend time with the baby and build memories. So in this bereavement scenario, you're thinking of things like supporting them to build memories. And that, that comes in like the specific thing that you want to do for this person, listing it. So for this one, it's more for this station on like the evidence-based station where what you want to do is like one point. For this station, what you want to do, like it's definitely more than one point. You have to be expressive about what you want to do to really show that you are professional in this thing and you know what you are doing you know and for the safeguarding women and children marking criteria acknowledges the need to escalate the safeguarding concern without women consent reflecting duty of candor so in this case the woman might tell you no don't tell anybody please don't say mm -mm. you let the woman know that you're going to act You've got duty of candor for her and you have to protect her. You have to safeguard her and safeguard her child. So you, while the situation may not, um, it depends on the situation. So you might get the situation where she's happy for you to go ahead. You don't have to, but if she's not happy for you to go ahead, then you have to um, state that if she doesn't want you to, you would still go ahead because of the duty of candor that you have to safeguard her. So communicate with compassion and empathy in language appropriate to the mother, providing clear and balanced information about the outcomes of the postnatal check. So basically this could come out of like a postnatal, you get the scenario. So maybe at the postnatal check was when you found out that, oh, the mother and the child needs safeguarding. So you communicate with compassion and empathy in a language that she can understand, providing clear and balanced information of why you need to do what you need to do. Identifies the need to act without delay, giving the risk to woman's safety and to raise concern at the first reasonable opportunity. So because you're safeguarding the woman and the child, you're acting as promptly as possible. Raises concern with the manager. So the MDT in this case is going to be the manager, the safeguarding midwife, the safeguarding lead, and then you provide clear and honest objective about the reasons for concern. Makes a clear written record of the concern, including a 
body map that's where you the holistic assessment comes to play where you're checking for any bruises you're doing a body map and the steps taken to deal with the matter you include the dates uh, with whom the concern was raised recognizes the importance of advocating for the woman and the baby acknowledges the need to keep to and uphold the standards and values set out in the code prioritize people practice effectively preserve safety promote professionalism and trust so for this station for safeguarding scenario things you might want to consider saying include relationship building we said that already communicates we said that holistic care then you want you might you would verbalize that you check the computer system for any other uh, related safeguarding concerns let's see if she's had any safeguarding documented in the past you want to check has she had any in the past is this the first one you want to update the records and then you check if she already has a safeguarding midwife or a social worker so you communicate the latest findings to them involve the mdt or the multi-agency team such as the safeguarding midwife, the social services the safeguarding for children advocates for the mother and the promoter of physiological processes through individualized care that's for the safeguarding um another thing i would just like to mention at this point for people receiving um they sometimes say that um you get the same scenario but for evidence based on professional value station we've had people go for their receipts and then they got different scenario entirely but the most important thing is the approach knowing what you need to do and then doing those things so whatever scenario you eventually get you know you are absolutely fine even if it is not the scenario you got the first time um i do hope you find this video helpful till you see me again in my next video i remain your darling omo pg remain in god and god bless you bye